All right, can everybody hear me? All right, awesome. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about malicious notifications in Ventura. Um, I actually probably would have chosen a different name for this um, now than I did back when I submitted the talk because it's not really isolated to Ventura anymore, but we'll get more into that. Um, to start with, uh, a little bit about who I am. Uh, my name is Thomas Reed. I work for Malwarebytes. I've uh, been there for about eight years now. Um, been in the Mac malware community. Uh, not like writing malware, but like <laughs> <laughs> um, fighting malware for longer than that. Um, uh, I uh, have the benefit of having a very common name. Like Thomas Reed is there, I'm, I'm one in a million. Um, so I, I tend to use my middle initial online. You, I, I'm not really active on Twitter anymore, but I'm Thomas A. Reed pretty much anywhere. Um, even so, even with the middle initial, I'm hard to find unless you know who I am. Um, and then that's my uh, personal website. Not a whole lot up there right now, but um, you know, some contact info and stuff like that. So let's get into the topic. Um, what we're talking about here, they're, they're in particular browser notifications. Um, and most, maybe all, I'm not sure, I can't say all because I don't know every browser out there, but most browsers support this concept of browser notifications where a website can send you a notification just out of the blue to your computer through your browser. Um, I have yet to actually see a useful notification. You know, you don't get thing, things like, oh, your browser needs an update. You don't get that through browser notifications. Um, you know, you get that through the system or whatever. Um, you know, honestly, like these are, these are just most of the time trash. Um, Unfortunately, these kinds of notifications have been abused by the bad guys for years. Um, you know, you'll see all kinds of bad things happening with these. Um, a lot of times what happens is um, scammers will use uh, SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. Uh, they'll basically create an entire website full of news articles that are designed to bring people into the site and once you're there you get this message asking you to allow notifications um, and they trick the user into giving permission and boom just like that you're going to get a flood of notifications um, so some symptoms when you see this sort of thing um, and, and we get these all the time on support you know people are like ah I'm infected, why didn't your software stop this? Why didn't you catch this infection? We're like, well, <laughs> you're not infected and you kind of allowed this to happen and people don't like to hear that, you know. Um, but basically what you'll see is you'll just see a long chain, like just tons of notifications, one after the other, uh, generally promoting some kind of junk software or maybe abusing an affiliate program. Um, so if I remember this screenshot, a lot of these up here actually promote McAfee. That's because the scammer involved is abusing McAfee's affiliate program. They get paid if you click on the link. If you click the notification, go into the website, you have just clicked an affiliate link McAfee gets paid or, or pays the scammer that got this notification on your system. Um, I, I would like to say that um, McAfee doesn't like this, but it's, they've been abused for years and haven't done much about it. And I shouldn't single McAfee out because they are not the only ones. There are tons of other companies that have their affiliate programs abused as well and generally speaking really don't do a whole lot about it. Um, if you are familiar with calendar spam, this looks a lot like that. If you're not familiar, basically the idea is 
you get to this website and it asks you to subscribe to a calendar. And that calendar gets added to your calendar app on macOS or iOS. And you start getting notifications about the events in your calendar that are very similar to this. So this is kind of what the user sees. You land on one of these websites, and these are not scams. These two examples were from legit sites that I went to to trigger these messages. So you know, don't get mad at, at Mac rumors or. <laughs> um, but this is generally the sort of thing that you will see. You'll see a message in your browser asking you whether or not you want to allow the the notifications for this website that you landed on. Now, what you'll generally see, um, I, I shouldn't walk away from the microphone. <laughs> okay. Um, so what you'll generally see here is you'll see a message like this, and in the background on the site, there will be some other kind of message with an arrow pointing right here saying, click this button. I'll do something really awesome for you if you do. I'll show you a video. I'll show you some cool pictures. You know, just click the button. Come on, you know you want to. And um, that's how they get people to do it. Um, so um, what people see after they've allowed the notification, um, it it's, kind of depends on the browser. Um, you can see. Here, the, the bottom left, that's Safari, and you guys, I'm sure, have seen this before. And you can see very clearly, you know, I've allowed a notification there for a website. And that's fairly easily found in Safari. Chrome's another story. It's a little bit buried deeply down in the UI. You know, when you go into settings, you have, kind of have to dig. Uh, I ended up actually having to do a search in Chrome settings in order to find this setting. I had no idea where to find it. So, uh, but you can go in here, you can see where these, you know, uh, notifications have been allowed and you can control it if you know it's there and if you know those notifications are coming from your browser, which a lot of times people don't know. Um, now let's say, you know, you guys are all IT folks, you probably want a way to be able to look at your fleet and say, okay, this user's got a bunch of sketchy sites loaded up as browser notifications. You know, they've allowed these. Um, so if that's the sort of thing you want to dig into, uh, you're going to need to get into the browser settings and figure that out. So in Chrome, it's fairly easy. Um, you go into the application support folder, go to Google slash Chrome slash def uh, uh, default slash preferences. That file, um, it's just one big long JSON file with a bunch of stuff in it. It's very, very long. Um, if you have multiple Chrome profiles, if that user has more than one, then it's not going to be default. You might have to do a little more digging to figure out which profile they're in. Um, but by default, it is default. Um, so you parse that JSON and you look for this um, push messaging application ID map inside of the GCM block. If that's there, it'll tell you which sites have been allowed. If not, they haven't been allowed. So that's a pretty easy one to, to go looking for. Um, Safari. Now, Chrome was the one with the bad settings. Everything was all buried. The data for Safari is what's all buried. So this gets complicated. So if you're looking at Safari, first thing you've got to do is you've got to go to the terminal on the machine in question. You've got to call get conf Darwin user dir. That's going to give you a specific folder inside of slash var slash folders, that's where you're going to start your search. There's a bunch of stuff in that slash var slash folders folder. So you really need to do this, otherwise you are never going to find what you're looking for. Um, 
So then in that path, you're going to look for com.apple.notificationcenter. And in there, there are several files. One of them is called db2. Um, you look inside of that, there's a db file, which is an SQLite database. And that's where you're going to find the information that you're looking for. Unfortunately, this is not present on older systems. And by older, I don't know exactly where the cutoff is. I had a couple of test systems at home. I know that if I went back as far as uh, 10.14, it wasn't there. I know that on the current versions of the system, like you know uh, Ventura, um, it is there. Um, so I don't know where in there it disappears, but somewhere it's gone, and I have no idea on those older systems where to find this information. I could not dig it up anywhere. The internet seems not to know, which is probably means more about my searching ability than, than anything else. But um, all right, so when you look inside this DB database, um, you'll find a number of different tables. There is one called app, um, which really just means where is this notification coming from? And it could be an app, it could be a website. Um, and the two things you're interested in are the app ID, which links all the different tables. So that app, app ID is on all the different tables. And the identifier, which is some kind of identifier. If you're familiar with app bundle IDs, it's kind of similar to that. Um, and so website notification identifiers, generally they will start with um, underscore web, underscore center, underscore, and then some identifier relating to the, the, the domain of the site. Um, so generally like web dot www.site.com. Uh, so that's how you can figure out in general if you're lucky, where the notifications are coming from. Sometimes it's not that simple. Uh, and then you can look in the record table using that same app ID. So like you're like, oh, this, this site's kind of sketchy. I want to look and you know, see what notifications have been sent. You can find those in the record table using that app ID. Um, so in the record table, you've got that app ID again, and then you've got data, uh, which is a blob, a binary large object in SQL, um, basically containing a binary P list. And I know we've had some conversations from yesterday about P lists. Um, I don't think it was in one of the talks, but outside, the, you know, in the hallway con, and how horrible P lists are, and how much more horrible binary plists are, but you're going to have to deal with them here. Um, as far as I can tell, there is no way that you can tell from any of the tables in this database, you know, this user has allowed notifications from this site. But you can see the record of the notifications that have been sent complete with text. Um, so you can see here in this example, uh, you can see that the app, web.onesignal.auto, um, and then there's a UUID there, uh, sent this message about the Reddit CEO. Uh, so what this actually was, this was a notification sent from Mac Rumors after I had allowed the notifications. Uh, but you'll notice the, the app doesn't say anything about Mac rumors, and that's probably because they've offloaded that task to some third party provider that sends these notifications out. Um, so that's why I said it may not be always be so simple as to say, okay, these messages are coming from Mac rumors, let's go look for Mac rumors. It's not there. So, um, but you can at least see the message. Like if you see something about, ah, oh, you know, your computer's infected you know, go download this program, you know that there's something sketchy going on there. Um, all right, so what's new in Ventura? Um, so what we saw, and we saw this happen 
right at the time that Ventura got released. We started seeing a lot of support tickets from people that were seeing things like this. Um, so first of all, you'll notice that the website notification is now showing up in system settings, in the notifications settings, not just in your browser settings. Now this is for Safari specifically. Um, and I would argue that's actually a good thing. You know, it makes them a little bit more visible. But check out that icon. Ask you with a system settings icon. So that is sketchy as hell. <laughs> they are trying to hide that this is coming from a browser. And if we were to go back to that page of notifications um, back on the first one of the first slides, you'd notice that every single one of them had the system settings icon in it. And that's a huge problem. The way that browser notifications used to work is they would show the Safari icon. And it was, if you were paying attention, immediately clear, this message is coming from Safari, it must be from a website, and you'd have your, your clue about where this is coming from. Now, they can show this message with a system preferences icon or any icon that they want to, and you have no idea where it's coming from. So that's a big problem. Um, the other weird thing here is this is here in system settings. It's also in Safari's settings. And you can turn it off in one place, and it does not seem to turn off in the other place. So it's they're, they're not quite entirely correlated at this point. I don't really understand how or why. Um, but generally speaking, what I would advise going to both places, remove it from both places, or set it to deny in both places. Um, I would also strongly recommend, back in Safari settings, let's see, let's go back to right here. Uh, you'll notice this box that says allow websites to ask permission. I would strongly suggest that you have your users turn that off or if there's a way that you can enforce that through MDM, and I'm not an MDM expert so I don't know. If there's a way that you can force that to be off, do so. Because you don't want your users pestering you about why system settings is suddenly asking you to buy McAfee or Trend Micro or whatever. Um, now, like I said at the beginning, um, I probably would have, uh, oops, wrong one. I probably would have changed the name of the talk if I had known what I know today. We have seen since I submitted this talk people on older systems starting to see the same thing. Uh, I don't know why, I don't know if there was a system update that sort of backported some of this functionality or if somebody found out how to do this from Ventura and then figured out that the same thing would work in older systems. I'm not sure, but at the time that I submitted the talk, we had seen this happen in Ventura specifically um, it, it started happening right around the release of Ventura, so um, I'm not sure what's causing it to now be seen in older browsers. Uh, anyway, too long, didn't read. Um, browser notifications, uh, in my opinion, they were a bad idea from the start. Now, you might have a different opinion. If you do, that's fine. Um, uh, my advice is just disable them entirely if you can. Um, you, you just don't want your users seeing this kind of stuff. Um, the, the bigger problem is that they are now more integrated into macOS. So they made their way sort of into system settings and they have figured out ways to impersonate other apps. Um, so you no longer can tell that they're coming from a web browser instead of an app on your computer, which means your users are more likely to think, hey, I'm infected, than to go and say, oh, this is a website notification, let me go turn that off. Um, and I mean, the, the 
ultimate result here is that scammers can now craft much more convincing messages. They can show the user more convincing notifications uh, and make the user more likely to click the link than they might have been otherwise. Any questions? Thank you. Just, just a comment. <laughs> I think uh, this talk ties in really well with um, Alex's amazing, forward-thinking, brilliant, big-picture talk yesterday about notifications, about software updates, and about how use nudge or not use nudge, and using third-party tools to present dialog boxes to users, and you know, trying to absolutely. And when you do that sort of thing, you've got to be real careful because. We have very first-hand knowledge. The user sees some weird notification they're not expecting, and their first instinct a lot of times is, oh my god, I'm infected. Um, I, I've actually had our own IT push things out, and I see weird messages on my Mac, and I'm like, okay, this is from IT. I know it's from IT, but it's a little weird. Like, I don't like this message. It's got a funky icon. I'm like, I, I think yeah. a good sysadmin is indistinguishable yeah. from malware. So yeah. I. I, I <laughs>